for me, I feel like we are sitting around a table playing sort of an equal role. We found that happened in the way that we grew and changed how we all interacted virtually over the last two years. When we were all thrust into this new era of first remote and now hybrid work, a lot of us needed reassurances that it was going to be possible. Well, a tech incubator called Not Impossible maybe had a little more confidence in that than the rest of us. And we're about to find out how they've not only embraced the current, but they see a future with remote and hybrid work that can actually be better than what we used to do five days a week. Joe Babarski is head of partnerships and strategy at Not Impossible Labs. Right off the bat, Joe, a lot of folks are going to say, now that's an interesting name for, for an organization. Tell us what Not Impossible is slash does. We are an innovation incubator and innovation accelerator and really a impact studio. So we are a studio that creates impact innovations, examples of technology for the sake of humanity, and those might be completely built from the ground up in-house, or they might be something that we participate in, that we work to help develop and contribute to the R&D process. And a huge part of how we do that is through impact storytelling. So we are a content studio in addition to a technology studio. Impact storytelling, if you just hear the phrase, it sounds like, okay, a series of great videos. But that's just one component, and then you've also got the live, remote, hybrid interaction of the team, but it's not just one direction or one kind of media you're putting out. Absolutely, I think that there's a way of thinking multi-format and then a way of thinking about how these things actually fit into people's lives and experiences. And sometimes people want a piece of innovation, inspiration, something that makes them connected with their workplace or their teams, feeling that sense of shared purpose, perhaps in a way that they can share. Sometimes we've, we've benefited from it being a live stream where people are actually chatting and engaging and there's that live interaction something that feels very much missing when you're spending day in, day out working from home and not having that sense of collaboration. You're a company that has a, you do have a physical presence in Venice, California, right? Yes. Okay. Venice, but, beautiful, sunny Venice. Beautiful, yes. quirky, <laughs> one of a kind Venice, California. But you also have always had, as I understand it, a pretty widely distributed team, right? Absolutely. So we have some team members uh, around the country, around the world. I myself live in Washington, D.C. I've actually been here since 2017, so I was a virtual team member uh, before it was cool. In some ways, personally, I have felt my team and my organization uh, our experiences have, have become leveled. We've all, we've all are meeting, meeting each other where we each other are. That is, you know, a tough transition for people who suddenly they have to go virtual. For me, I feel like we are sitting around a table playing sort of an equal role and, and able to collaborate more um, and kind of intermesh more easily, connect a little more dynamically. And, and we, found, we found that happened in the way that we grew and changed how we all interacted virtually over the last two years. I genuinely think that this is this is sort of a sea change that we are, we're not gonna see a sort of snap back to those expectations or perceptions that virt working virtually, it kind of uh, puts you in an out group. I think that it's going to take a balance though. And, and I, the word hybrid is being thrown around I now around it's some going people to take in, a balance, some people out, though, changing over the course of the week. I think that we're going to have to really be thoughtful and intentional around how we come together in person, how and when it happens, um, and the degree to which it is kind of a milestone event. Some places might really need to be in person a lot. I think other companies, we've seen companies like Twitter say, you can be re completely remote, remote as much as you want. I still think there can be a lot of value in people coming together in person. And that's what I've been excited to see at Not Impossible is us start to use, use these opportunities to bring people together as a way of building culture, of a way of creating creating real milestones throughout, a, uh, say, a bit, you know, a year, and using that time, really taking advantage of that time that we're together. Um, and that is still, uh, still, I think, work needs to be done, but I think there's something to be said for when we come together in person, being able to put those computers to the side, to put those phones to the side, and actually be able to leverage what it means to be face-to-face. -face. And when we do come face-to-face, -face, however often that is for a given organization, I think when we go back to the remote, don't both halves of that equation make the other half better? I absolutely think that those kind of what we can build in terms of real human connection in person can make the way we work together virtually more effective. I also think that the way that we can 
flex in and out of our own lives and connect virtually can support your culture. I don't think we should perceive that somehow culture only happens in person. Culture, um, as they, I think people have said, is like, it's not just happens what happens in the break room, it's what happens in the boardroom. Well, look at us now. Now we kind of spend our time around a virtual conference table, essentially, is the, is the default format. So I think thinking about the formats that we interact, whether that's an in-person interaction or the virtual formats. When we all went virtual at Not Impossible, we started um, having daily stand-ups with the entire team. And that was a big ask of everyone, but it was really helpful to kind of get comfortable and figure out this sort of never been done before <laughs> way of working that we were navigating. Um, and we made sure that we made room to talk about what this was like, how this was challenging, what people people were grappling with as they dealt with that onset of COVID. At the time, that helped really kind of build those connections at a time where it felt like all of a sudden one day, we weren't all seeing each other the way we were used to. And then we got to build a kind of new, um, a new cadence and a, a new vernacular for how we work together as a team. I've always been struck by how the Not Impossible team is just such an open, creative bunch of thinkers. Do you have anything on your, on your list there at the organization that you can share with us on what you'd like to do next with remote or hybrid work? Is there anything you guys think, you know yeah. what, if we're audacious enough, we can try this? I think the smart technology that is available today could be leveraged to such great effect to enable the success of people aging in place at home, people who, whether they are, whether they are aging, whether they are dealing with um, a cognitive decline or, or perhaps a brain injury, the people who deal with challenges in terms of their sort of daily living and activities of daily living, there are so many ways to connect people to empower them in their daily lives through smart technology that can be done today. It's just there isn't a concierge you can call up necessarily who comes into your home and sets it all up. And I think many of us have parents and grandparents that we can appreciate, wow, if we can set this up today and get comfort and fluency with a system, that could make those people that much more connected and their lives that much more rich in the next 10 or 20 years. I, I think are really part of like the next generation of what we do with hybrid and remote presence with each other. It's beyond just work, right? We're talking about moving this to a broader slice of our lives, right? Right, and I think that, uh, I think we've all experienced uh, an intermeshing of the workplace and the rest of yeah. our lives yeah. are somehow don't feel Whether like we like it or not. anymore. Yeah. And you know what? I would love to see a tech stack that supports that supports our us living well as much as us working well. And I think that all, all of us experience this isolation in this last two years has given us new perspective. And I think it hasn't been harder on anyone more than our seniors. There is, there is I think, an under-recognition that isolation doesn't just affect us sort of behaviorally, it really affects people cognitively. Interacting with other people, new and different experiences, and meaningful uh, human interaction and conversation is like fuel for your brain. So that is something that has been so difficult for people who've been dealing with isolation. And I think as we step into what is next for, for, for our society, it's really important for us to look for how can we solve for the things that felt like, felt like impossibilities during the pandemic, because we know they can be made not impossible.